Now there comes a point in every job where you reach that sort of nirvana moment where you just go, ah, I'm in control of it now. And this, I think, touch wood is it, because I got rid of all the old bits of pipework, all the bits that were in my way. I've now put in battens beside each joist. I've screwed those through to the side of the joist and those battens are set down below the level of the joist to allow these pieces of plywood to sit in so that they are flush with the top of the joists. So having done that, I'm now ready to do a trial fit on my chow former, my tray if you like, that's going to form the waterproof element of the, the wet room. So the, the waste pipe's in, the soil pipe is in, everything is just about right. In other words, a little nudge here or a nudge there, and I'm gonna be ready to fit that pre-wall. And once I've fitted that pre-wall, the job from then on is as if it was a new build, which is what I really like, because then there are no surprises. We just go through bish, bosh, bash. Well, that's the theory anyway. So when it comes to joining plastic waste pipe, there are two types of pipe. There's this one, ABS plastic, which is made for solvent weld joints, although you can also put mechanical joints onto it. So you've got that choice. And the other one is polypropylene, which is a softer kind of more waxy feel plastic to it, which you cannot put solvent weld onto, it just won't stick. So I've seen many examples where DIYers have grabbed the wrong pipe, shoved a bit of this around there, thinking that they're gonna stick it and it hasn't stuck. So we've got solvent cement here. Now in the rule book, when you use solvent cement, you're supposed to use a cleaner on the pipe and also on the fittings because when this is made and it comes out of the extrusion machine, the extruder, it's got a kind of waxy surface on it, which it helps it come out nice and shiny. But that waxy surface doesn't actually help when you come to stick it. And actually it's not even sticking it. What's happening here is it's melting the surface. That's why they call it solvent weld, because it actually melts the surface of the two bits of plastic and joins them together. And once it's joined, it is joined. Believe me, if you come back in 10 minutes, try and undo that, you will not get it undone. You destroy the pipe. So I love it. I never use that push fit polypropylene nonsense because I never find it very good. Go for the solvent weld and uh, obviously not great stuff, but the other thing is I don't use the cleaner and the reason I don't use the cleaner is because once when I went to the factory of the people that make this pipe, one of the very famous manufacturers of this pipe, the guy said to me, actually, he said, do you want a tip? He said, you don't need to use the cleaner. He said, get yourself a little bit of abrasive, a little bit of emery or whatever. He said, and just give it a little wipe round. That takes all the shine off, all the wax and everything else. And also, mechanically abrades the surface slightly so that when that does stick together, you have the best surface in the to do it. So that's what I do every time, all day long. <laughs> do that, little white round on the inside, take any rubbish away. We're now ready. Now I've got to think about this because I need that to go there. And as I say, if you make a mistake with this, you don't get a second chance at it. So. We stick a bit of this on, and as I say, it's not glue, but it helps if you just put a nice bit on there, all the way around, and a nice bit on there, all the way around. And then you put that into there, and you don't just leave it like that, you give it a little twist both ways. And if you twist it, you'll find you've got a few seconds to be able to twist it, and then it'll twist no more. So that will be fine, that's going to set in position. And the reason you have to twist it is because if you put a pipe, let's do it with this larger pipe if you like, if you put that pipe inside a socket, and this has happened to me on one occasion, it, so you've tapered that off and you, you've, you've solvent welded up and you push it in. Now if that leading edge scrapes against the pipe, it's gonna actually scrape solvent weld off the socket of the pipe. So that you've got an actual dry spot going through. You've put all your gunk all the way around, you've just got a little dry spot there. So when you push it in and you turn it, it just covers any 
possible dry spot there is. 100% job. I don't get problems with this stuff leaking and it's a good job I don't because the next job I've got to do is right down in this hole. I'm going to be working blind, just doing it all by fill. I've got to get the solvent weld down there, got to get the pipe on and if it leaks I have absolutely no way of getting down into that hole to fix it short of making a massive grey hole in the wall downstairs. You see down there, let, have a look down there, right down there is the pipe which I've already cut with a, a handsaw and uh, I've smoothed the end off with some emery cloth. Now I've got to get this fella down, I've prefabricated this whole joint so that that will basically sit there but right down there at a low level and then I can put my other pipe into it but it saves me having to make up all these joints which I'd never have done down there all right so we've got prefabricated section if I drop this I've got to go back to the plumbers merchants get the solvent weld on there we've got a few seconds to work with this and then it's game over don't panic Roger keep calm right so I've got a load on there now has it gone on far enough because the other thing is I've got to make sure there's fall on this pipe that it's running downhill because as every plumber knows water doesn't run uphill payday's Friday if you've heard me say that before then you're a regular viewer right just you couldn't really do this normally but just because I can I'm going to slap a bit of stuff around that just around the outside but I'm going to thoroughly test all this God, this stuff is solvent they wouldn't sell that to young kids because it's not good for you that's why I look 90 years old breathing that in all your life it's a nice leg <laughs> So now I've got that in there, I'll just let that set and then I can put the vertical pipe in which will be a lot easier. That turned out to be a three man job didn't it? Lighting, camera, action. Now this is the underside of the tray which I'm going to place on top of the plywood and this is the very clever trap which is omnidirectional. So we can turn it around, we can go that way, that way. So I know where I want to go with it. I'm just showing you this so you can see how it slots on the underside of there once the tray's bedded down and then that is screwed into place. Very important by the way, they do supply an O-ring to go with it and that O-ring has to go round there, put a little bit of silicon on and then pop it into place and it's absolutely perfect seal. You can see that none of that is going to leak. So I can do that, I'll just put this to one side because of what? Oh, that's, that's, the, that's the dog bowl. <laughs> that's the dog bowl there. Sorry dog. Bernie the dog who's helping me out today. This is going to go down under here. Now, for years I resisted using these little flexi connectors because I'm old school and these felt like cheating. And also I wasn't really happy with the corrugations inside it but the McAlpine one is pretty smooth it's a pretty good product so I'm going to use it to make life easy for myself for once and what I've all got to do is I've got to blank this exit off with a solvent weld there's a blanking plug that's supplied with it and on this side I'm going to put the reducer the level invert reducer Pop that into the end there, that's going to be solvent welded into place, obviously with the lip at the bottom so that we don't form a dam. I've seen them put the other way around, believe it or not, so that everything collects in there. You know, if it can be done, it will be done. So that's how I'm going to use it. That's the configuration that I'm going to use it in. But let me just show you while I'm here what else we've got in the box, because if you didn't want to go that way, you've got a reducer here which will take you, or an adapter if you like, that will take you into a bit of two inch pipe. And it depends what your flow rate is, to, to whether you're going to go inch and a half or two inch, but quite honestly, it's going to give us loads on this shower. Now, on the, you can't probably see it, but on there it says up. And what that means is up. You must have that at the top, because if you look, you'll see 
that there's a built-in fall on that so that it's immediately coming out and if you do it the other way round it's going to go uphill so you don't want that so that's one way to get out of there we can go there and we can put the reducer in there or whatever we want to do we can get away on that way or we can go down straight down in this case we would go through the music room ceiling straight onto the top of that grand piano no we don't want to do that but that gives us that option we've also got that option or that option or of course if we didn't put that blanking plug in there we could come out through there so you've got a lot of ways to go you can go that way that way one way you can't go is that way but anyway you see the idea it's a really versatile bit of kit so long as you've got room and we have room here take that off because that's not going there anyway take that off and we've got room for this trap just got room to put it in underside of that tray so everything hinges if you like upon getting this trap in between the joists or wherever you have to and every single situation obviously is different malt loaf do you know what it is it's it's basically it's fruit isn't it that's the the currents in there you said sorry you said sorry isn't it sorry 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 yeah. Sorin, Sorin. I've been eating it for years. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Sorin, sorry, Sorin, Sorin. So Sorin seems to be the hardest word. Sorin. <laughs> See, yeah, 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 yeah. Three AD, yeah. Well, I really quite enjoy this because I've worked everything out now, and everything's kind of fallen into place. I've got my trap in there, I've got my saw pipe for the loo, I've got my hot and cold supply in, I've got rid of all the old pipe work. Some of it was going nowhere, it was capped off at the other end. So I've, I've really added to my scrap collection quite considerably, if you like. So now I'm ready, I've put the battens on the sides of the joist so that the plywood infills sit flush with the top of the joist so then you'll see that we can bed the tray straight down on the KST adhesive so at this point we just need to test up obviously before I cover anything up I need to test all these fittings and make sure the hot and cold is, is sound and everything's working I've also got another little job over there which is to run the supplies to the new position for the tower rails that means I've got to drain the heating system down but I'm, I'm getting there I'm, going, I'm, I'm, I'm away with it so I'll just get on, get these screwed down, make sure everything's really solid, nothing's gonna move around. This building's so old that all the shrinkage has taken place, so that's, that's a real joy, actually, rather than working on new builds where it's all just still moving and shrinking. But some people worry about wet rooms. Actually, wet rooms have got a better record than shower trays in a way, because with a shower tray, you often get those leaks down the back. If you've got a good system, and this is a system, you'll see this, if you've got a good system, then you do that process around the edges to make sure everything is okay you'll see belt and braces nothing will leak it'll really be a good job yeah 